Hello, and welcome back to Let's Call Her Savannah. These are the errors of us, the story of love, stealing the from I am so, so, so excited. You don't know how excited, how long I've waited for this day. We are in episode 15.3, and you're like, Kayla, why are you excited about this? Because for the last, if you haven't noticed, for the last month and a half of their relationship, maybe even the last two months, basically since book two, we've been going in the same redundant circle of conversations. Like, Sav doesn't know what she wants. Kelly wants Sav. Sav doesn't know what she wants. Does she want her ex? Does she want a new puppy? Does she want Taylor? Does she want Kelly? What does she want? And she never knows what she wants. So then she'll like hurt Kelly because she's over here wanting her ex. And then Kelly's like, oh, I'm her. And then Sav's like, oh, wait, let me be better. I'm going to try. But then she never really does try. And we're just in this circle of Sav's going to try. Sav wants Kelly. Sav doesn't want Kelly. Sav's going to try. Sav wants Kelly. Sav doesn't want Kelly. Sav doesn't know what she wants. Kelly is just in this circle of I want you, but oh my God, you are literally making my head spin. And that all ends today. You guys are welcome. Welcome to book four and a half through book five. It's going to be beautiful chef's kiss. It is a plot twist. And like Ashley Kutcher says, I am a sucker for the plot twist. I'm so, so excited. So without further ado, let's jump into 15.3. It starts on day 103. Um, And yeah, it's like the end of this episode into the beginning of the next episode. That's like the plot twisty part that like really changes up the plot. So we're going to get there. And I'm so excited. So, so excited. Um, It's on page 176. I don't know if I already said that, but if I did, we're here. Day 103. Monday, May 31st, 2021. I'm up the next morning before her and I take Taylor out back, letting her run some circles out there while I drink my coffee. The mosquitoes out here are so bad. My house is surrounded by trees, but I don't want Taylor being loud with Jasper inside and waking up Savannah. She needs to sleep. Eventually, Savannah comes out to come find us and we go inside to make breakfast. We sit on the bed eating and I ask her if she wants to go out and do something tonight. What do you mean do something? She asks, raising her eyebrow at me as she takes another bite of cereal. Like just go to dinner or bowling or something outside the house. Highlight where Kelly says, ask her if she wants to go out and do something. Sav says, what do you mean do something? Kelly says, like, just go to dinner or bowling or something outside the house. What, you don't like our cuddles, she says, raising an eyebrow. Kelly has a cat she can cuddle. She does not need you for cuddles. No, I love our cuddles and all the time we spend at our houses, but it hurts sometimes when you do so much out with your friends, like having them all over the other day and going to the pool and going out with them all the time into hockey games. And now all these trips, I'm not going on and I just want to do something real with you too. Highlight, I just want to do something real with you too. I say looking at her, trying to see how she's going to react. If it makes you feel better, no, I know you're still in your head about my birthday trip to Tampa, but no couples are coming at all. Highlight... I know you're still in your head about my birthday trip to Tampa, but no couples are coming at all. We banned, I'll keep highlighting, we banned all couples from coming, so it's really not just us. We highlight, we just don't want any relationship drama because stuff always gets messy when couples go on vacation with friends. And Aaron's trip, I didn't even know he was planning and he just got us four tickets for Kendall Layton, me and him, because those tickets are technically for Kendall's birthday, not even mine. You don't have to be jealous of him. He really doesn't want me. That's so far from that, the truth. Like that man genuinely just really believes he's going to marry you. And it's, it's wild. And honestly, I, I don't think he's wrong for believing that. None of us think he's wrong for believing that because you are the one who leads him on entirely to believe that. Yeah, his eyes say it different when he's looking at you like he owns you, I respond. Oh, hush, she says, nudging me with her arm. I just feel like I'm a secret. Like you haven't told me when we're back together since everything happened. Highlight. I just feel like I'm a secret, like you haven't told anyone we're back together since everything happened. You made me hide my car and we never leave your house, our houses anymore. And I never get to hang out with you and your friends. I say, highlight, you're not a secret. Everyone knows about you and we can definitely go do something. I've just been sad and depressy. So I haven't been going out much at all and I have to save money. I feel like that's not accurate. I feel like all Savannah does is go out. And I genuinely don't know how She goes out with how much money she makes and then her bills. Maybe it's just because Aaron pays for it all. Like if she goes out and does anything when she actually leaves the house with Kelly, Kelly pays. And 
then if she goes out with Aaron, Aaron pays. So maybe that's how, like, I, I genuinely don't know. I don't want to say Kelly pays. She doesn't pay all the time. She pays for, like, the bigger stuff they do, I should say. When they go out to, like, any sort of dinners and drinks or anything, they usually, like, pay an even amount. For the bigger stuff they go do, Kelly pays because Savannah does not have that kind of money. Um, but I just genuinely don't know how Savannah even goes out and does all this stuff. Oh, no, she has credit card debt. I, that makes sense. Okay, never mind. Credit card debt. I, I forget she does that. Um, okay, she says, kissing me. Just figure out what you want to do and we can. She hangs out for a while, but I need to make TikToks and she needs to go home and nap and get ready if we're going out later. So she kisses me bye and tells me she loves me before she and Taylor head home. I make TikToks for a couple of hours, one of which is about how Aaron and Amelia told her to take me to Chuck E. Cheese because I'm 19, which is fucking annoying. Lovely. Highlight. Aaron and Amelia told her to take me to Chuck E. Cheese because I'm 19, which is annoying. If your friends are telling you to take your 19-year-old girlfriend to Chuck E. Cheese, you shouldn't be dating a 19-year-old. Just, I, I feel like that's common sense, I fear. That's, like, really weird. Really weird. I'm going to eat lunch, but at 4, S still hasn't said anything, so I text her asking if she's up and that I found a cute little place we can go to dinner at. She responds and says, sorry, I just got up and going to shower. I feel terrible and I'm so exhausted. I don't know why. I can't imagine. I say we can just relax and watch movies tonight if you want. She says, I know you don't want to do exactly that though. Haha. <laughs> I just could sleep all day and my head hurts so bad. I don't know why. I text back. I'm sorry, baby. It's not that I don't want to do that. I just want to do something other than that together. But that doesn't mean we have to tonight. Highlight. Kelly, yet again, compromising for Savannah. Highlight, I'm sorry, baby. It's not that I don't want to do that. I just want to do something other than that together, but that doesn't mean we have to tonight. She says, I'm going to make a doctor's appointment before I go to Florida because I just keep sleeping. Nervous laugh emoji. I say, yeah, do you want me to head over? She calls me asking me to bring over medicine and soup when I come. So I grab the medicine off her nightstand, throwing it in my bag before heading out the door. I stop at Panera, picking her up chicken noodle soup and grilled cheese and a soup for me as well. I jam out to happy music for once on the way to her place and let myself think this is real because it's starting to feel like it is. She's been really nice the last few days. No comment. Um, maybe it just took a second. Okay, but we, we are going to highlight it. No comment, but we're going to highlight it. She's been really nice the last few days. Maybe it just took a second. When I get up to her apartment, she's in bed and I heat up our soups, putting them in real dishes before carrying them in into her we watch movies and she does really look like she feels like shit so i baby her and cuddle her getting her water and the things she needs and giving her another massage she runs her fingers down my arm what do your tattoos mean she asked me eyeing the one on the inside of my arm savannah doesn't have any tattoos but i have a few small ones the one that says believe me you'll see me on the other side is from beyonce's song other side and i got it as i was healing from bella to tell myself i could get through anything after i got to the point of not wanting to murder myself anymore the heart of my hip was a sun tattoo I always gave myself since I was a kid and I always wanted to get it tattooed permanently once I was old enough. The rose and familia I have on my leg I have matching with my aunt and the sun and moon on my back I got after Bella betrayed me to represent how quickly people can change like the night changes to the day or the day changes to the night. Kelly, <laughs> all of her tattoos are so traumatic. Wow, so dark, she says giggling. Yeah, I'll get a dark one for you too after you break my heart, I say back teasingly. Oh, hush, I won't be breaking your heart, she says, kissing me. She falls asleep in my arms, and I fall asleep soon after her leaving the dishes on her nightstand to be dealt with in the, the morning. Highlight, yeah, I'll get a dark one for you two after you break my heart. I love that because every single time, everyone loves my shooting star tattoo, and I feel like you guys can put two and two together, shooting star you know, the beginning of the plot line. Um, but I love just everyone will be like, oh my God, I love your shooting star. And like, obviously like just random people I meet who like see it. I'm like, thanks. But then when it's like my friends and stuff, I'm like, oh, but let me get into the lore of the shooting star tattoo and the whole details behind it. And that's always fun. Cause then it's like, it's not as cutesy once I give the whole backstory of it, but it is a great tattoo. It looks super cute. And it took me like I don't even know how long. It took over a year and a half, I think, for me to commit to it. It takes me so long to commit to tattoos. Um, but And it's my only tattoo that I got once I was an adult. If you're under 18, don't listen to this. Don't do this. Bad. Um, but we got into Kelly and Bella's story. So her tattoos when she was 
the day before she turned 17. And then the one she got with her aunt, she got when she was 17 as well. So this is my only tattoo that I've gotten. I got it when I was 21. Um, so it's the only tattoo I've gotten in my adult years. Um, day 104, Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. I wake up and my morning is instantly flipped upside down when I check my phone. Babe, I say sitting up straight. What, Savannah says, looking around the bathroom wall at me concerned. I get up and shove my phone in front of her face. What does that mean, she asks. It means my account was permanently banned. I say beginning to freak out. And my account literally just fucking hit 210K. I add wanting to cry. Do you think Amy did it, she asks me while finishing straightening her hair. I don't know, I say. What can I do? I don't want to just leave you like this. I know this is really upsetting for you, she says, pulling me into a hug. No, go. There's nothing you can do. I'll work on it while you're gone. I don't want you to be late, I say, as I unblock Amy and type a message to her saying, I swear to fucking God if I find out this was you and send her a screenshot of my account. Sav kisses me and tells me she loves me before heading out the door to her doctor appointment. She messages a couple minutes later and asks, assuming Amy was the cause of all this, can you fix it? I say, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I know some other ship doc accounts that have gotten their accounts banned and then gotten them back. So I message them and I'm waiting on responses. She says, I'm sorry, I'm not good. TikTok help, but it will all be okay. She probably is just being a reporting troll. Highlight. She's probably just being a reporting troll. I say this is literally $1,500 a month for me. This is everything. <laughs> that's wild for Kelly to say. That's highlight that because that's going to be insane in the future. Just how little money Kelly made on social media. Like that was her side job. Like that was her rent and that was that. And we'll see her like, was she technically an influencer at this point? She was an influencer in like kind of the amount of followers she had. She wasn't an influencer in the sense she wouldn't have considered herself an influencer at this point. Because once we get to the end of the first series, she's going to consider herself an influencer. And most influencers hate using that word. And it's going to take Kelly a long time to start using that word and being like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm an influencer. Like I make tens of thousands of dollars on the internet every single month. And I have hundreds of thousands of followers. Like, yeah, I'm an influencer. Um, but we're going to kind of see her transition from making nothing on the internet and that being a big deal and that being really exciting to like actually making a lot of money on the internet, which I feel like is one of the only portions of Kelly's story that like most people kind of can't relate to is like that influencer side of it. So much of like the abuse plot line and the relationships plot line um, is like the relatable part of this story and why this story exists. But we also kind of get to see that storyline that is kind of unique to Kelly of her starting out, like not really as an influencer at the beginning of the story. Like, yes, she kind of had this mass kind of bigger following to really becoming like an actual influencer, an actual content creator and actually making money off of it. Um, highlight, this is literally 1500 a month for me. This is everything. Amy calls me and starts claiming it wasn't her and tells me I can message TikTok to get the account back and she'll send me the info and she'll message them for me too. Sap texts and says, just try to get it back and after that, see what happens. I send her a crying emoji and say, I'm gonna off myself. She says, it'll be okay. No reason to off yourself. I say, this is my worst nightmare. I like that. I like, this is my worst nightmare. She asked, did you call Amy yet? I say, yeah, and send her a screenshot of my message with Amy where she's telling me she didn't get my TikTok account banned. She says, who knows, maybe it wasn't her. Yeah, maybe it was you. I say... I just lost everything. She says, just appeal it and I'm sure you'll get it all back. I say, you don't know that though. I may have just lost it all. My life has gone into that for the last year. Highlight... You don't know that though. I might have just lost it all. My life has gone into that for the last year. She says, I don't know for sure, but for now, that's all you can try and do. This is why I never want anything to do with social media, but I know all the work you've put in. So hopefully the appeal works. I say, I hope so. I'm going to cry eventually. She says, that's okay to cry. Dance class should distract you some. I say, I can't go to dance. Highlight where Kelly says, I can't go to dance. She asks, why not? It'll help you not feel as sad. I say, I have to work on this. Highlight, I have to work on this. She says, Amy got hers back, so yours should be fine. And hopefully it just gets fixed quick. I say, I need cuddles. She says, just assume you'll get yours back too. And I'm sure you will. I'm giving you air cuddles in my mind. Ha ha ha. Today is going to be so crazy because I've been lazy and got nothing done. I say, okay, with a wide eye emoji. She asks, when are you going to work? I say, I don't know. I was supposed to go to 
at two after class. She says, don't let TikTok stress you all day. It's all going to be fine and work itself out. And you can make money at your real job and it'll be fine. I'm sorry, though. I have no idea how to fix it. I say, yeah, I know. She says, hopefully you two will be able to figure it out, though. I say, yeah, I'm trying. Are you coming home after your oil change? She says, yeah, I'm washing my car and then going to. And then I also have to go to the gym at 12.15. I say, okay. She says, I have a whole list of shit to do before I leave Thursday. My mental health is shit again, and I'm very overwhelmed in life. Highlight where Savannah says she's overwhelmed. Not a fan at all. I just need to go away for a vacation alone for like a month. Ha ha. I feel like that would benefit everyone. I roll my eyes at that text. Just another vacation away from me and say, same. She says, do it. I say, can't just take a vacay, LOL. She says, you most definitely can. I say, no, I can't. I literally just lost an income worth a two-week vacation. That's accurate. She says, with your real job, you can just work one extra day and have enough. Ha ha. Are you, and you were talking about how you wanted to work more anyways, but I'm sure your account will be fine because this is your first time having this issue. I say, hopefully, I just want to die. She says, you don't want to die. It all happens for a reason. and It'll all work out, and you always find a way to make it work out. Highlight that because that's accurate. You always find a way to make it work out. Yeah, and it just makes Kelly hate you even more every single time she has to work it out. It just, like, every single time you make, you do some other bullshit that makes Kelly, like, Every time Kelly would be like, maybe, maybe, you know, it's all in the past. Like, it's not really that big of a deal anymore. Every time Kelly would, like, almost forgive you, you'd do something else. And Kelly would be like, nope. Actually, I remember I hate her guts. Like, every living intestine inside of her, I hate. Um, And then she would, like, work it out. But then she would be like, god damn. Like, I just really hate that bitch. I believe in you. I say just come home with two laughing, crying emojis. She says, ha, I'm trying to get all the things done so I can. I feel the depression coming back in and I need to get it figured out. I'm just sick of being in this constant cycle and don't know how to fix it. Okay, this is about your girlfriend, though. (laughs) Your girlfriend just lost $1,500 a month, Savannah. Which is a lot of money to her and it's a lot of money to you. So shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about your depression coming back again right now because your depression comes back every Tuesday in this storyline. Um, if this was like a thing that you didn't say every single Tuesday, we'd be a little bit more concerned here. But you're overwhelmed, you're sad, you're depressy every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Friday, okay? So can you care about your girlfriend and like not make it all about you, potentially? Potentially. Highlight, Sav, making it all about her. Um... I feel the depression coming back in and I need to get it figured out. I'm just sick of being in this constant cycle and don't know how to fix it. Maybe stop the cycle starting with stopping drinking. Um, I say I didn't know it had stopped. Maybe it's just me then. (laughs) That's so funny of Kelly to say because I was just saying it's literally every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And then Kelly turns around and says, I didn't know it had stopped because it's literally it doesn't stop. You literally that's you all the time, Savannah. You're so overwhelmed. You're so sad. You're so depressed. Yeah, all you do is drink and surround yourself with like really horrible, toxic people. And then you're so sad. You're so depressed. You're stuck in this constant cycle. But you wake up and every single day put yourself back in that cycle. And Kelly's actually having a real issue where she just lost a whole stream of income completely at no fault of her own. And you're just pulling out your random Tuesday bullshit. Okay. She says, I have a few good days But it's coming back even worse. Everyone in my group chat thought I'd off myself because I didn't respond for like a whole day. A whole day. I just want to be alone and I hate that, but I'm trying to not be like that. I say I don't really get it. (laughs) Kelly don't respond to people for a week. If, If my group chats were reliant on like people not thinking I'd offed myself, if I didn't respond for a day, everyone would think I'd offed myself. If I wouldn't off myself, nobody would even freaking know, except the people that live in my household, because I don't respond to anything. None of my friends outside the people in this household, none of my friends, none of my family would ever know for literally like five months, because then after like five months, they'd be like, okay, she has not responded to us, but I don't respond to anyone ever and not sorry about it. If you need to contact me, contact Andy or Dakota, because I will not be responding. I don't respond. When I pick up my phone, it's to work. And then by the time I finished like 10 hours of working on my phone, I put it down and I would rather drill holes into my brain than respond to a text message or especially return a phone call. I can't. I cannot. I say I don't really get it because I'm the opposite, but I'm sorry. She says, I know you are. are haha. I love being alone. It's awesome. Laughing, crying emoji. I say I can just leave if you want. She says, no, you don't have to. I didn't mean it like that. Just don't think I hate you when I'm not touchy feely because I'm just in a mood. 
I say, honestly, I'm just used to it. I don't get offended anymore. All of these things Kelly are saying are like highly red flags. Like you don't even get offended that your girlfriend isn't touchy feely anymore. Like girl, why are you with her then? Can we go back to the other thing where Kelly said, I didn't know it had stopped on page 180 after the other thing we highlighted. Cause I feel like those are both just red flags. Like, and Kelly just being like, I don't even get offended that you don't even want to touch me anymore. Like, that's sad. That's sad. She says, that's just me, haha. And even more when I'm like this, I say, yeah. She says, yeah, I hate that I even have to do this trip with everyone and so many people this week, but I have to seem happy about it. Okay, just so everybody knows that went on that trip to Tampa with Savannah, she hated it and she didn't want to be around any of you guys and she was annoyed by the entire thing in general. So she's an ungrateful ass bitch that you guys all took time, took time off your jobs, took time because you guys don't have a job like Kelly's job in the future where it's just remote and you can just take off and you can just work from wherever and still make a fuck ton of money. You guys all have these regular jobs that you have to take off of and get time off of to go spend time with her for her birthday, for her. And she was ungrateful as fuck. Just so you guys all know. Highlight. Yeah, I hate that. I even have to do this trip with everyone and so many people this week, but I have to seem happy about it. So just know she was unhappy and unthrilled the entire time she was with you guys. I say, yeah, it sucks. She asked, how is TikTok going? I say, I still want to die. She asked, did you do the appeal? I say, yeah, I did at nine. She says, hopefully they respond soon. I say, just waiting. I was going to go live, but I can't. Why die emoji? She says, you going in class, into class now? I say, no. You'll get a good break from me though because you'll be out of town and then my mom's in town, so that'll be good for you. She says, I wasn't asking because I want to get rid of you, haha. I just don't want you stressed. I say, I know. I was just telling you because I know you're stressed about people being around right now and I just thought about that and I will be, so it's fine. Nervous laugh emoji. She she says, I just wanted you to know so you aren't surprised when I'm distant, but I'm on the way home. I say, it's okay, and I'll be here. Highlight, I just wanted you to know so you aren't surprised when I'm distant. I say, it's okay, and I'll be here. When she gets home, she cuddles me, and we take a small nap together to distract me and because she's still tired. And when I wake up and check my phone, by some miracle, my account is back. When S wakes up, I tell her, look, I told you it would all work out, she tells me, kissing my head. I go into work and snap her a picture of me and my panties before heading out onto the floor. I'm here pretty early. It's not even three yet, but there's a steady stream of men for the amount of girls here tonight. When I come back into the dressing room after a few dances, S texts and says, how is work going? I say, it is good. I'm on track for the first time in a long time. So that's good. What are you up to? She says, look at you go. I'm finally sitting down for a minute. I haven't stopped all day. I'm so tired. I have to get a couple more things done so I can just go to bed and do more in the morning. I say, well, that's good. You're getting it all done. I'm exhausted too. Sleeping emoji. I swear I almost fell asleep on the first guy. She says, you can sleep tonight and then tomorrow I'm waking up early and don't get to sleep in this week. I have a facial tomorrow and massage Thursday. Yeah, it sounds like you have such a shitty week planned, Savannah. You're going on vacation where all your friends are taking off to go on vacation with you. A vacation that your girlfriend would probably literally die to go on. And you're getting a facial and a massage. But yeah, no, it sounds like your week's so awful, Sav. Um, not like your girlfriend just got her whole entire income stream taken away and then got it back, which is like an emotional fucking whirlwind. Like to find out a whole part of your job gets taken away, you lose $1,500 a month. And then just to get it back, like the whiplash and the anxiety that that causes within a person. But like, you're just getting a massage and facial, but like your whole life sucks. And you're so mad about this entire week where your friends are taking off to spend time with you. Okay. Um, I say no sleeping in with a wide eye emoji. She says, you get to sleep in while I meet Kendall at the dog park around nine. And then I go to my facial. I have to get all the things done. I say, that all sounds like fun though. All good things. She says, and tomorrow I have to give Taylor a bath, which is great. I say, oh yeah, you have fun with that one. I'll be home for that one. I need either need to go home in the morning or that night to get things done. She says, I've been trying to get her out of the house. So we were at the dog park for like an hour earlier. I say, but then I'll come back and say, oh, it's a long time, LOL. You need to let her just run at my house. She says, you can come over come and stay whenever. I'll just be preparing all the things before leaving. She loves running at your place, but she has her friends here to make her run more and play with her. I say, yeah, and that works. You have to do one thing for me when we go on your birthday trip. She asks, what is that? I say, I want pictures and I want a ton, but I won't force you to do that. But at least like one good one a day. Love you. Kizzy wink emoji. She says, ha ha, I will agree to one a day, even though I hate them, but no TikToks. I say, I know, but I, but you love me so. She says one picture a day. I say one good postable one a day. She says, I'll cross that bridge when we're there. Ha ha. Pictures are my least favorite thing in the world. And putting them on social media sucks even more. Highlight and putting them on social media sucks even more. We'll get to that in book five. 
nervous laugh emoji. I say, but you love me to happy emoji. So thank you, red heart emoji. She sends me three arrow emojis and says descriptions of my feelings on social media. I say, I say postable because I want them to look good. I've never even post you, posted you on my main Insta. She says, I appreciate that because you take horrible pictures of me. Haha. Ha. I say, well, if you would hold still, she says, no, pictures suck. I say, but baby, I want pictures. Why do emoji? She says, I am not the picture type of girl. No, you're just a toddler. Like you were literally just a talk toddler. Like everybody takes pictures. It's part of life. You take pictures with all your friends. You constantly have pictures showing up that Kelly has to see of you and all your friends, but you can't take pictures with your girlfriend. Like it's only your girlfriend that you have any sort of issue with. And you know what? Honestly, I'm just so glad that Kelly is no longer, was it a video? No, it was a video on Amelia's TikTok I saw. And I was like scrolling through old things the other day. And it was a video on Amelia's TikTok and you flipped off the camera. And I was like, I'm so grateful. Cause then Haley also has videos and photos like that. And Kelly has videos and photos of that. There's so many videos and photos of you just flipping off the camera and being like, and I'm so grateful that Kelly's no longer dating someone who does that. Like how childish, how childish that you can go on a $4,000 vacation with your girlfriend. And literally, instead of just being like, Hey baby, I'm like really grateful that you took me on this vacation. You planned this entire vacation for me. You put so much thought into it. So I'm going to be thoughtful back and I'm just going to take like some good pictures with you and be happy. And you know, when we're just like out and about and doing things like, yeah, like let's take a picture together. Like, cause you're always like really thoughtful of me and considerate of me. And let's just like take a picture together. But no, it's just like, wow, how old are you? You're turning 29 in two days and you're 32 and still doing this. Ah! I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to God that Kelly is not with you. And you know what? It ripped Kelly's heart out and blood just gushing on the floor, just heart stake in her freaking heart to leave you. Shout out to 19 year old Kelly for leaving you because, oh, I'm so proud of her because God damn, I would literally smack you across the face if you flipped off the goddamn fucking camera wall. Like my life is so busy now. When we need to get a picture, we need to get a picture and then move on to whatever the else we're doing. I do not have time to sit there and deal with a freaking toddler who just wants to be like, eh. I don't want to take a picture. I don't want to take a picture. I don't want to take it. Like, oh my God, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you? You will take a picture for your family. You will take a picture for your friends, but you have such an issue trying to take a picture for your girlfriend. Like grow the fuck up, grow, grow the fuck up, grow the fuck up. You'll take pictures cheating on her, but you won't take a picture with her. Grow the fuck up, grow the fuck up. And somebody chop your middle finger off, chop your middle finger off because what? Mm. <clears throat> they just, oh my God, how childish. How freaking childish. I don't know if there's a single picture of me that exists of me flipping off the camera. This has become too long of a rant. We will, we will rant so much later on. I don't want to rant too much about the pictures right now. We're going to get a whole bunch more evidence on that later on into a whole Savannah and taking pictures thing. Um, that we'll discuss it more in detail later. But... Savannah and pictures pisses me off. It makes me so angry. And I'm just so grateful that Kelly left you because I would literally want to smack you across the face if you flipped off the camera in a freaking picture I was trying to take and acted like a goddamn effing toddler while we were trying to take a picture. I'm not dating a toddler. She was dating a 29 year old, about to be 29, two days away from 29. Like grow up, grow up. I say, well, if you want to be my lover, got to get with the gram. She says, could you, t could tell you the same about photos and to deal with not getting them? I mean, you do. You literally tell Kelly it's Savannah's world and you're just living in it and you have to do whatever I want. Your girlfriend is asking for one simple thing. Your girlfriend is saying, Hey, I'm taking you on a $4,000 goddamn fucking vacation. Just take some good pictures with me. And you're like, uh, uh, like grow up, pomey. I say that wouldn't be nice, sad emoji. I go back out and get more dances and text her around seven saying, what are you up to? I can leave in 30 minutes, but I'll probably push it longer. She says chores and also writing a list of what all I need to, to accomplish tomorrow. And I just want to nap, but I'm trying to not. I say, well, if you do need to nap, just leave the key under the mat, LOL. 
but it's good. You're being productive. I'm going to get Panera. So it forces me to stay longer. She says, I'm just passing out early because I have to wake up early. Anyways, the door will just be unlocked. Haha. -ha. I say, okay. She asks, when are you leaving? I say, I can leave whenever. When do you want me home? She says, no specific time. I was just seeing when you were planning on what you were planning on doing. I say, probably till around eight. I'm making good money. So I'm trying to ride it. She says, make all the money and stay till whenever. Haha. -ha. I say, okay. I don't want to mess up your sleep. She says, I will be completely fine. If you wake me up, I will literally just go back to bed. Haha. -ha. I say, okay, sounds good. All my videos are going under review before posting now. I roll emoji. She says, that's stupid of them. I say, yeah, I talked to a guy on the floor and we've been talking quite a while and he keeps talking about doing the skybox. So I run into the back and message Savannah saying, I think this guy might get a skybox. So I might be stuck here for another hour. I roll emoji, but also lots of money so before running back out to him but I got my hopes up too soon because he just ends up taking me back for a 15 minute dance which is still like $150 so whatever but I wanted more I need to put as much back in the bank before we leave for vacation I message s again while I change to leave never mind he wasted my time just like I thought he was going to I'm about to head home she replies we're here I shower before getting her water and getting in bed with her she's almost already completely passed out and so we fall asleep instantly but as I drift off I can't help my anxiety from today's conversation everything seemed to be going really well and I'm afraid she's going to go back to treating me like shit after this trip welcome welcome to the beginning welcome to the beginning i'm so excited i'm so excited welcome to the beginning of the plot twist let's let's begin day 105 one of my favorite pages days days i guess i should say one of my favorite days and i will forever for the rest of my life this is wednesday june 2nd 2021 I always, when I think of this day, I think of this as Savannah's birthday. This is not Savannah's birthday. This is the day before Savannah's birthday, but I will spend the rest of my life referencing this day as Savannah's birthday and always thinking of this day as Savannah's birthday. And it's not, it's the day after this. So if you ever hear me reference this as Savannah's birthday, be like, Kayla, you're dumb. No, it's the day before Savannah's birthday. I don't know why my brain just like connects the two. The days just like these two days just kind of flow into each other. And technically at the end of this day, she's going to wish ha Savannah a happy birthday. So it does kind of like connect into it at midnight, at midnight, but then it's technically the next day. I don't know why my brain always just thinks of this day as Savannah's birthday. And I have to be like, no, it's the day before Savannah's birthday, but welcome to the day before Savannah Tyler's birthday. And we'll get into Savannah's birthday in the next episode. So day one of five, Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. The next morning I wake up to her getting ready and ask if I can come with her and Taylor to the dog park. But she says Kendall wants to talk about her problems with Layton. Hi, Leia. Kendall wants to talk about her problems with Layton. And she doesn't know if she wants to share it with everybody, which is a stupid excuse to not bring me since everyone knows those bitches have so many problems. Aaron and Savannah spend all their time flirting with each other, talking about how many issues those two have. She tells me to go back to sleep, and I do, but not before I deeply analyze the fact Monday S was too sick and tired to go out and do something with me. But yet again, here she is going to the dog park with one of her friends. That's valid. That's 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 accurate. And I have to get all my rage in before, before we get into 14 and book five or not 14 um week 17 in book five because I don't get to be ragey as much I don't think in book five this is like my last my last like two episodes like well then there's one other but okay I'm, I'm shushing I'm shushing I'm too excited you guys I deeply analyzed the fact Monday S was too sick and tired to go out and do something with me but yet again here she is going out to the dog park with one of her friends it seems like I'm the only one she's too sick to actually do anything with or too tired highlight it seems like I'm the only one she's actually too sick to do anything with or too tired I wake up again when she comes back and Taylor jumps in bed with me but Savannah yells at her to get down because she's a mess and needs a bath I turn on the bowl type and ask her if she wants to watch with me but she says she's about to be late for her facial and has to go she kisses me before leaving and i tell her i love her and she says love you back before she's out the door again leaving me and taylor alone <laughs> this is exhilarating just to think about this part this is this is so fun this was so fun for kelly i love this scene Taylor jumps up on the bed and I don't tell her to get down. She nudges her wet nose up under my arm to get pets. I pet her and say, mommy's not lying to me, right? Her friends know about me, right? I go to get socks to get out of the bed and go find food for the day because I kicked mine off somewhere in the bed last night. <laughs> I just have like excitement. Like it's in my chest. It's rising through me. I'm so excited. I like can't even talk. Um, like that feeling I get where like it becomes hard to talk because I'm about to cry, but it's like almost tears of joy this time where I'm just like, yes, 
This is the part that I've been waiting for. Um, I open her dresser drawer sleepily, but it's the wrong one. And I see her sock monkey from when she was little and pick it up smiling at it, thinking of baby Savannah. I've at this point found any living photo of her on the internet between her Facebook profiles and her family slash friends, but she's so much older that there aren't a ton of photos from when she was younger. And then I see them out of the corner of the, my eye, the Disney tickets. I pick them up and turn them over, looking at the agenda printed on the back. And I already feel myself growing bitter just at the sight of them and the thought of him. They have Epcot July 2nd, Animal Kingdom July 3rd, Epcot again July 4th, and Magic Kingdom July 5th. Highlight that. They have Epcot July 2nd, Animal Kingdom July 3rd, Epcot July 4th, and Magic Kingdom July 5th. They're not even going to all the parks. How fucking lame could he be? That's so accurate. Like, you didn't even go to all the parks. And Kelly's been to all of the parks multiple times since then. And your lame-ass boyfriend didn't even take you to all the parks. Boring. Um, I'm about to drop them back in when I notice that there's an... I'm about to drop them back in when I notice that there's an extra ticket. There's an extra fucking ticket. Highlight that shit. I'm about to drop them back in when I notice that there's an extra ticket. There's an extra fucking ticket. Because Savannah told me it was the four of them going. So what the fuck is the fifth ticket for? Right? Right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Did Aaron get it for me? And Savannah not want me to go? Or is it for someone else entirely? And I'm the only person who got left out of this plan entirely. One ticket says Savannah. Another says Aaron, which I have to fight that her just not rip into shreds. Fair Kelly. Another says Kendall. Another says Layton. And the last one just says guest. I turned to Taylor saying, if the guest isn't me, they're going to get fucked up. And so is Aaron. That's definitely the voice Kelly said that to Taylor in without a doubt. With out of doubt he's such a fucking asshole you should bite him taylor taylor just looks up at me from her nap confused just happy i'm letting her lay on the bed what else is mommy hiding from me i say looking at taylor again i go into the kitchen pulling down savannah's supply stash of Allie's adderall and pop one into my mouth i'm going to turn this place upside down until i find every fucking lie she's hiding from me oh the scary kelly coming out kelly <laughs> Kelly just said, <laughs> Kelly just like went to the deep end. Uh, Kelly just dove off the deep end um, or the high rise. Um, okay, I'm going to turn this place upside down until I find every fucking lie she's hiding from me. <laughs> Don't let Kelly find out you're a liar because she will, without hesitation, go through every single, every single piece of your belongings, like every single molecular inch of your belongings she don't do that shit she don't she don't do lives or she just walks away i don't feel like kelly now would do that because i feel like kelly would just walk away like she just doesn't have time but kelly then would literally be like you're lying to me i'm i'm going to destroy this place and find every single lie you're telling me kelly now would literally just break up with you because she would be like Mm, I think you're lying and like I literally don't have time to destroy your house finding every single thing you're lying to me about and I just I don't have time if you are lying to me so I'm just gonna dip out but this Kelly she would have she would have she was a she was sick a little bitch but she was a bad little bitch and the same way that Sav played that song in the beginning that was like I'll never be loyal to you which ended up being true Kelly did play sweet but psycho and I feel like that's been that's very led up to being true um I look back at her Instagram story of the four tickets I screenshotted and it only shows four tickets so she purposely went out of her way to hide the fact that there were five tickets from me I'm fucking fuming now I start in her bedroom see and this bullshit is exactly why I don't look through her phone even though I have the password because she knows I wear her clothes and go in her drawers yet she just left this in there I can't fucking fathom the lies I would find on her phone. And I really just don't think I want to know. I go through the rest of her dresser, emptying the contents. I go through the envelope in there filled with photos from her past relationships and her and her sisters when she was younger. I also see the poem I wrote her to tell her I love her in there, which is sweet. She held on to it in here. That's important. Highlight. I also see the poem I wrote her to tell her I love her in there, which is sweet. She held on to it but also fuck her for lying to me. I go through the other drawers looking under her clothes and in the corners and then following up doing the same in her closet. I even pull out her island stool to get up to see the top of the closet, but I find nothing. I check her bathroom drawers and cabinet for making more 
for maybe more fucking pregnancy tests or some new exciting find. Nothing. I check behind the motivational painting on her bathroom wall. Nothing. I check under her mattress. Nothing. I check under her. I check her nightstand. Nothing. I think, but I'm also not sure, but I could have sworn there were more condoms here all jumbled up. I count them. There's eight. I could have sworn there was 10 or 12 before, but I was an idiot and didn't count them because I didn't think I needed to. So now I'll never know. God damn it. She probably is fucking Aaron every night we haven't been together. All those nights she supposedly needed space. I find nothing else to know and I can't go just based on suspicion. So I move on. I go through every book under her nightstand, flipping them open and dangling their pages over the ground. So if anything was in them, they would fall out. Have we talked? I feel like we talked about this in the beginning of the series, but after the whole condom conversation we just had again, I know why I have condoms. I have condoms and I'm a lesbian, but that is because I'm a mattress actress and we have toys and it's literally just easier for us to slap on like because we're making content and stuff and we'll be like switching between toys and stuff and it's easier to just like be able to like because we'll keep them all like in separate like bags and things to like keep them sanitized and such but like we have animals and like little fur and things will get stuck to them and so we just slip a condom on and then you have like it's perfectly you know good clean to go and then as soon as you finish you can just slide the condom off rinse it off it's good to go put it back and it's like sealed away container and it's good to go that's why we have them sav what's your excuse what what's your excuse for having condoms in your nightstand that you like to fuck men why do you have condoms in your nightstand when you have a girlfriend because you like to fuck men while you have a girlfriend I mean, if that's what you want to do, boo-boo, that, that is, that's your loss. I go under her bed, looking up above to see if anything is hidden there along the bottom of the back, pulling out her winter bin from underneath the bed and going through that too. Nothing. I open her picture frame on the counter, checking inside. Nothing. I reach my hand under her dress and around the back of it on all sides, feeling for anything. Nothing. I go out to the kitchen and start going through everything, cabinet by cabinet. Nothing. 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 I do find a paper on top of her fridge that says she makes four... $4,600 a month. Highlight this. I do find a paper on the top of her fridge that says she makes $4,600 a month with a list of bills she has to pay every month. I get to her junk drawer in the island and pull it open. There's so much shit in here. Notes, letters, bills, bracelets, and a letter to Riley from last Christmas. I unfold it. She didn't even write it. It's typed out. Of course, she's that lazy. Highlight. And a letter to Riley from last Christmas. Hey, it's your other girlfriend who might just <laughs> both you and your ex. I know I can be awkward and expressing feelings isn't easy for me, but I'm about to wow you. Riley, thank you. Thank you for showing me that not everyone is bad. Thank you for proving that I'm worth knowing and that it's worth waiting for my walls to come down. You've taught me that a relationship doesn't have to be toxic to be exciting. Thank you for just being yourself. When I met you, I was so closed off to letting anyone into my life. I honestly didn't think anyone cared enough to try. But they say everything happens for a reason. Isn't that what you just told Kelly like today? Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. And sometimes you find what you need when you least expect it. When you least expect it. Sav, you've never, you have not been single literally ever. Literally ever. Like you literally just discard the last bitch, pick up the new bitch. And usually you have the new bitch picked out before you even discard the last bitch which we're going to get hella into. I was just thinking about like the whole plot line in February. Jesus Christ. Um, but you did that. You did that with Kelly. You already had Kelly picked out when you and Riley ended. And then you went and immediately picked up Kelly. You were like, let me go back to the strip club. You're going to do that after Kelly too. Like, what? I mean, okay, moving on. I didn't realize it at first and it took me a while to believe it, but you are exactly what I was looking for. That's not how you describe it to us. I knew you were special because I never remember details, yet I can replay our first meeting in my mind like it was yesterday. <laughs> I remember you and you walked into Lauren's and how amazing you looked. I remember what you were wearing, how you awkwardly held my hand, and even the story about your ex that you shared. I remember you asking about my favorite song and what you said just before you kissed me after I turned you down the first time, of course. At the time, I didn't think much of it because I wasn't looking for anyone, but I'm so glad you insisted I come home with you that night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, three months later, I have a list of things I absolutely adore about you. 
Okay, this is this is where Kelly starts getting mad. What do you, what, let's describe Kelly's mindset as she's reading this. What do you what do you mean you have a list of things you adore about her? Kelly asks you all the time what you like about her. Kelly asks you all the time what you love about her, and all you can answer her is I love you because you're cool and you're fun to be around. So what do you mean you have a whole list of reasons that you like this bitch? Would you when apparently you tell Kelly, you tell Kelly all the time that you didn't really like her that much and you Kelly's the first person since Alex that gives you all these feelings and makes you feel all these things that you haven't felt in years but supposedly you have this whole list about things you what was it love about Riley adore adore about Riley hi I have a list of things I absolutely adore about you your taste in music is number one of course. I love how you recognize my favorite songs and sing along with me. Okay, well, Kelly, bitch, literally memorized all of your favorite songs. Did not know any of them because you're old as shit. And um, no offense to everyone around Savannah's age, but compared to Kelly, she's old as shit. Um, literally about to turn 29 while Kelly's actively 19 years old. Um, so all your music to Kelly is old as shit and it's country as fuck and old as shit. And Kelly doesn't know any of that because she just moved from California and is literally a baby. Literally learns all your songs for you. So fuck Riley and her stupid little songs. Um, music means so much to me and you understand that completely. Well, I hope you enjoy all of Kelly's songs about you. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them because music means so much to you. And now you have music written about you. Amazing how that works out. Um, no intention behind that or anything. And you understand that completely. Besides music, I find myself admiring you doing the simplest things. What, like cooking for you? Appreciating how wonderful you are. I thought you told Kelly she basically sucked. <laughs> and feeling incredibly lucky to have you in my life. And y'all never even like had sex. Your genuine laughter is the most wonderful sound. I don't know. She just looks like one of those bitch that has an annoying laugh. Laugh. It makes me smile like a fool every time. <laughs> okay. I love hearing your random thoughts and the way you explain your thought process to me. I love how comfortable I feel with you. How even silence feels com between us feels comforting and right. <laughs> well, yeah, Riley can have that because Kelly don't ever shut up. Kelly don't ever shut up. So you don't get silence around Kelly. If you want to take Kelly, just know she she a yapper. She don't shut up. Um, I admire your hard work and the pride you take in your job. I love your those little noises you make before bed and in the morning. They're so adorable. I love cuddling you, kissing you, holding your hand the right way. Highlight that. Would she say she loves holding Riley's hand? Wait, but haven't you been telling Kelly all the last couple of weeks that you hate holding hands, even though your Bumble profile says that you're a needy bitch and need physical touch? And... um you constantly told Kelly about how much you loved physical touch and you always needed to be touching at the beginning of the series. But then later on, you're like, I don't like holding hands. I don't like holding hands. I don't like holding hands all of a sudden. But you and Kelly are basically like the same amount into your... That's another big thing to think here. They are just getting into... When will it be four months? Four months will be the 18th of... This book gets us into four months. So we're basically like three and a half months in at this point. This is like what's becoming the fourth month. Um, so they're basically at the same point. This said they were three months into their relationship. This is a right around the same point that Kelly and Savannah are in their relationship when Savannah wrote this to Riley. So that's another important thing to think here. So supposedly you love holding Riley's hand when you told Kelly you don't like holding hands, which is different from what you told her at the beginning of y'all's relationship. Now, all of a sudden, you don't like holding hands, but you love holding Riley's hand. You know, the ex-girlfriend that you slept over at her house and, you know, constantly lie about and are sketchy as fuck about. Okay. Um, and just sitting and talking about anything and everything. I even love the quirky facts you teach me. So what is this bitch in an encyclopedia? But I think my favorite thing is how absorbed you get in your own world when I'm talking to you. That was sarcasm, by the way. 
I love how you always need a wipe after snacking in the car. And speaking of snacks, I love that your taste in snacks is terrible, so you never steal mine. I love how you notice the most ridiculous things in the movies we watch and how you push all the right buttons when it comes to football. Go dogs. I love how you talk in circles and how your voice gets louder when you're excited. But most of all, I love how you make me feel. Highlight. I love how you make me feel. I love the way you look at me. Making me feel cared for and happy. I love you, Riley. I could go on, but I'll spare you the boredom. This is going to be a very important thing. Narcissists love how you love them. When they talk about, and she's going to, this will be, we'll see this later on with Kelly as well. Pay attention to what they say they love about you. Because she just said in that last little spiel, she said a bunch of stuff she adored about her. But when she said why she loved her, she said she loves how she makes her feel, how Riley makes Savannah feel and the way she looks at her and the way she makes her feel cared for and happy. Like that's not actually anything about Riley that she loves. That's how Riley makes her. That's how Riley feeds her need for attention and love. That's not actually anything about Riley she said the stuff she adored about Riley but she didn't say those were the reasons she loved her she said in the reasons in the reason she loved her was because of how she makes her feel not because she actually loves Riley but because she loves the attention and love she gets from Riley in conclusion despite this cheesy and then she goes on to tell Kelly about how she never even really loved her and it was basically just a relationship of convenience that never really should have happened so I mean Take it with a grain of salt, boo-boo. In conclusion, despite this cheesy and poorly written note, I want you to know, would it take anything for you just to be confident in anything you say and to like not self-depreciate? What is that? Self-deprecate? Self-deprecation. The self-deprecation is so just insane all the time. Like you were 29 years old. You were 28 in this scene. And when you wrote this stupid little letter, you're like about to turn 29 in the scene though. Like literally get some fucking balls and say it with your fucking chest instead of being like, oh my God, I'm so sorry for this like cheesy and unreal written letter. Like... It's so annoying. Self-deprecation is such a turnoff for me. I don't know about you guys, but like, I'll literally look at you and be like. In conclusion, despite this cheesy and poorly written note, I want you to know that I'm excited about all the first we'll experience together and hopefully the seconds too. <laughs> yeah, you knew you guys didn't get seconds. If I can find a way to keep you interested that long, you apparently didn't. Um, to be determined, I might have to bribe you with some awesome trips and potatoes. Just know that you mean the world to me and I can't imagine my life without you. That doesn't sound like what you told Kelly, like this entire storyline or the ways you've talked about Riley, this entire storyline, but whatever, boo-boo. Thank you again for being everything I never knew I needed. I love you so much, babe. So we're seeing here, this is like a really great example. This is the letter she gave Riley. Like this is what Riley received while they were in a relationship. So it just really shows the way that Savannah treats women in a relationship and the ways and the words she feeds them and the things she tells them. But then the way after the relationship, she actually treats them and the just like cycle they end up in after the relationship and the way she talks about you after the relationship to other people so horribly the way she negatively talks about you to other people and how you never really meant much to her yet this is what she's feeding you while you guys are in a relationship okay well kelly's fucked up now because kelly's reading this now we're back to the present i gag rather than cry fuck riley Fuck the fact that we are at the exact same length into our relationship as they were at this point. And all Savannah does is tell me how she doesn't like holding hands and would never write something like this about me. I take a photo of the letter before folding it up again and digging around the rest of the cabinet. I open the fridge and open a Corona before walking over to the couch and picking up the remote to turn on death metal despair on the TV. I'm not done looking though, but now I'm even more seething about this fucking letter. Like how come Savannah says I'm the first girl since Alex to make her feel these things and how she constantly tells me she never felt that deeply about Riley yet I find this letter to her and not only the letter it's an extra copy of the letter she printed out and kept for herself I go under those drawers in her island and it's where she keeps all her important documents and I go through them all scanning them for anything that could be of importance I find a Pandora ring in a box that almost looks like it could be a promise ring but Savannah has never said anything about getting one of those from anyone so I take a picture of that too just in case for future reference if I do find out something it connects to later but right now discard it as unnecessary evidence along with everything else under here i feel under her couch and the table behind her couch and the side table nothing the books on the table behind the couch nothing the baskets under the coffee table nothing under the coffee table nothing i'm 
secret compartment in the coffee table that will magically tell me who the fuck I'm actually dating and why she can't be honest with me to save her life. No, I make my way to the TV stand feeling around that too. Nothing. Move her Nintendo switch. Nothing. Printer. Nothing. I open the drawer to the right. Nothing. Drawer to the left. Blankets and bingo journal. I flip it open and there's barely any writing in it, but Riley's name. Of course it's Riley again. It's always fucking Riley, isn't it? It's always fucking Riley or goddamn fucking Ava or goddamn fucking Caitlin. It's always one of those fucking bitches and their stupid name that just pops up everywhere. Me into the writing on the first page. It's dated May 19th, 2021, which remember when I had you guys highlight some things earlier on. Highlight May 19th, 2021. Remember when I had you guys highlight a while back the date and Savannah, remember, said she was going to stay home and write about her feelings. And Kelly was like, oh, that's a really good thing because she's going to go and like write down her feelings about us and like figure things out. This is what she really wrote. And that's why we highlighted that day. And that was the significance of that day, because this is what she was really writing about, which was literally. Oh, and this is Morton, too, which was literally nine days after she told me she loved me. Yeah, go and tell your girlfriend that you fucking love her and then go write this shit. Okay. This is why Kelly has trauma, which is literally nine days after she told me she loved me. Fuck love. May 19th, 2021. Riley. Riley. I miss her. We're starting off strong. We're starting. You miss your ex, but you have a girlfriend that you've had May 19th, so... February, March, April, May. So that was three months in. That was the exact three months mark, um, literally in a day that you've been like going out with this other girl and flirting with talking with going out with this other girl three months in, but you miss your ex. And your girlfriend constantly asks you, and you just told her you loved her. Your girlfriend constantly asks you, do you miss your ex? Like that's what so many of your guys' fights revolve around is do you miss your ex? Do you want your ex? And you constantly tell her no. You constantly tell her no, but it starts off strong with, I miss her. Highlight that Riley. I miss her, but she has repeatedly hurt me. Has she hurt you or have you hurt her the same way you hurt every other woman in your life? She's toxic. Is she toxic or are you toxic? Cause this all sounds toxic. It sounds toxic that you like miss this bitch while you're in love with this other bitch. But then you also told the bitch that you're in love with currently that the other bitch never really meant that much to you. But then you're sleeping over at her house. So, I mean, and right now I need stability in someone who genuinely cares without doubts about their sexuality or mine. And right now I need stability in someone who genuinely cares. You're saying that as if you don't actively have a girlfriend who's stable for you because her feelings have never changed about you just because you're the most unstable motherfucking bitch that's ever existed does not mean your girlfriend has been unstable at any point throughout this. Your girlfriend has been stable as fuck throughout this. Like she has been like, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I support you. What do you need from me throughout this entire thing? Like, I want you. I'm here for you. I support you. We are going to get through this together. She has been stable as fuck for you and someone who genuinely cares. You've, you've never had any other bitch who's genuinely cared about you as much as Kelly does ever, ever. So I'm just really confused why you're verbalizing it like this, because you literally have that other than the without doubts about their sexuality or mine. I mean, you are kind of weird with Aaron. So, and it's funny that she says that too. I highlight, I need stability in someone who genuinely cares without doubts about their sexuality or mine. So you're saying that Riley also had doubts about your sexuality? Because we know Riley's bi and outside of you, she's really only ever dated men. So it makes sense that she was like questioning her own sexuality. But you are supposedly a lesbian. So there should be no questions about your sexuality. Yet your current girlfriend thinks you have an issue sleeping with men, specifically the one man that's constantly around you. And it seems like your ex had that same issue. And you've also said in the past that Riley was jealous of Aaron, which Kelly's also jealous of Aaron. So it almost seems like this is a repetitive pattern with all of your girlfriends. They all seem to have this issue with Aaron, which kind of yet again, like we saw in book three, makes you the common denominator or maybe him. You guys just like a joint little pair um, are the common denominator. Despite this, I miss Riley. Okay, let's highlight that again. Yet again, miss your ex. Cool. But I realize I must move on from her. Oh, being three months into a relationship with someone else wasn't enough to be moving on from her. 
I need to not acknowledge that we can't be friends. Seeing her only reignites feelings I can't ignore. <laughs> Highlight, seeing her only reignites feelings I can't ignore. But you see her all the time. You go and hang around her all the time. And every single time your girlfriend is like, do you miss her? Do you want her? Is there anything there? And every single time you're like, no, no, of course not. Like, I love you. I want you. Like, you're the person I'm with. And you wondered why Kelly didn't trust you. And you would always be like, you like, you have your own trauma, but like, Kelly, you should trust me. You should trust me. Like, you should trust me. Why should she trust you? You're literally writing to your goddamn fucking journal that your ex ignites feelings inside of you. Every time you see her. And I can't be around her without wanting more. Seeing her only reignites feelings I can't ignore and I can't be around her without wanting more. Written nine days after you told your new girlfriend of three months that you love her. <sighs> okay, there's too much history and I did love her. So I must accept that friendship isn't possible for me. I don't, don't you always say that it's, Riley's issue that you guys can't be friends is that isn't that what you always tell Kelly that it's Riley's issue that makes you guys not able to be friends but it really seems like from this little journal entry sab that it's your issue it's solely only your issue because you're an unloyal evil conniving lying fucking bitch that I don't know why you needed to drag Kelly into any of this shit like go be in love with your ex somewhere fucking else anywhere fucking else away from the 19 year old Riley, this is me saying goodbye. Shouldn't you have said goodbye before you told your next bitch you loved her? Just personally me. Um, I'm letting go of hope that there will ever be an us again. Three months into your relationship with your new bitch? You're just now letting go that there will ever be an us again? Even though you constantly tell your new bitch how much you don't want her and how you never really wanted her? Just know that I loved you deeply. That's not what you said to Kelly. Highlight, just know that I loved you deeply. Hunty boo-boo. You were everything to me. Highlight, you were everything to me because that is not how you explain it to Kelly. You showed me happiness briefly before you turned into an absolute bitch. That's relatable. That's, that's relatable. That's really relatable. Um, but now I'm focusing on my future, one that doesn't include you for now. So um, Kelly just... Kelly, you know, on the 19th was like, it's good. It's good. Like Sav's going to go write her feelings. You know, when she said that she didn't think her sh feelings, her girlfriend who had just nine days prior told her that she loved her. She didn't think her feelings were that she wanted her ex and that she missed her ex so much. Ah, if you can't, if you haven't figured out yet, Kelly's kind of lost her mind at this point. Kelly has now found the Disney tickets. Kelly has now found the literal little letter to Riley, basically saying she wanted Riley more in all the ways that she says she doesn't want Kelly at the same point into their relationship as they were. And then she's now found this journal entry to Riley that was nine days after her girlfriend said she loved her about her wanting her ex, which. Kelly has looked directly in Savannah's eyes so many times and been like, just tell me if you want your ex. Like, it's okay if you want your ex. Just communicate with me about it at least. Like, I need to like know this. Just like, tell me. And like, I'm willing to like walk away from this. Like, if that's what you want, if that's what you need. But like, just tell me. And Steph's like, no, like, no, no. Like, we weren't even really a thing. Like, she was like, not someone like, yeah, I loved her. Like, and like, I cared about her way. But like, I didn't even like love her like that. Like you're the first person since Alex that like I really loved that deeply and like give me all these feelings. Okay. I cry reading it. Uh, yeah, you of course would have Kelly. This is what she was writing when I thought she was writing about her feelings about us. Highlight. This is what she was writing when I thought she was writing about her feelings about us. And get rid of the word. Get rid of that first about. And so it just says, this is what she was writing when I thought she was writing her feelings about us. She was writing her feelings about Riley, not me. Highlight, she was writing her feelings about Riley, not me. Okay. When she, which just tells me even more what has been burned in the back of my head since Riley got home. That she wants Riley and I'm just her rebound. She's wasting time with until she can have Riley back. 
Which if you want Riley back, boo boo, go get her because you have Kelly motherfucking Anne and you want fucking Riley. Okay. That every time she's been around Riley, she has wanted her more than she wants the girl she already has at home. Highlight. That's so fucked. That every time she's been around Riley, she has wanted her more than she wants the girl she already has at home. I turn another page and it's just her germ gym gym workout the one she never uses i turn it again and there's more written my feelings Ooh, goody we get more i'm just at a loss of what to do at this point i don't know break up with kelly and like leave her the fuck alone so she doesn't have to deal with any of your bullshit i have to be free to figure out who i am highlight that that's gonna be important i have to be free to figure out who i am you're 29 bro Shouldn't you have figured that out like a while ago? I feel like I don't know myself at all anymore. Have you ever known yourself? Like since your identity was soccer back in like high school, like outside of drinking, do you have an identity? And abusing women? Like, I'm just sorry, like abusing, cheating on women and drinking. Like that is your sole identity. I'm just so confused in life. I just want to be happy with myself and not find my happiness in others. Okay. <laughs> I pace her living room and throw the journal down onto the coffee table. I can feel the Adderall coursing through me as I go faster in a back and forth zigzag between her TV stand, kitchen island, and back to the coffee table where I glare at the journal before I begin circling the kitchen island. What the fuck do I even do? Leave her, Kelly. Leave her. And never come back. Never come back. Do I call her out for the lies about the tickets? Like, who the fuck is even going with them other than her fucking girlfriend? I want so bad to go out this weekend and cheat on her and give her a taste of her own medicine. That's important. I want so bad to go out this weekend and cheat on her to give her own taste of her own medicine, but I won't. I never fucking do. Highlight, but I won't. I never fucking do. My act of rebellion against her is smoking a cigarette while she goes and cheats on me with whoever she wants whenever she wants. She wrote in her journal that she needs to be free, whatever the fuck that means. I've told her so many times if I am in the way of her healing to choose my, herself and I would be fine. Highly, I have told her so many times if I am in the way of her healing to choose herself and I would be fine. But then she tells me how sad she would be and that she does want me. Really? Because it sounds like you want your ex. But this is just all exactly what I've been terrified of. She liked her ex-girlfriend way more than she loves me, apparently, based on that letter. Because everything she liked about her is what she hates about me. Or I'm sorry, loved, even though Savannah always has made it seem like she didn't even really love her that much. And when this also just shows that nine days after we said I love you, she just wanted her ex. And that every time I've said that she wanted her ex, I wasn't delusional. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't overthinking. I was exactly right. Highlight. And that every time I said that she just wanted her ex, I wasn't delusional. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't overthinking. I was exactly right. Exactly fucking right. Exactly. Put that on a fucking teacher. Teacher. I'm always fucking right. Every single fucking goddamn time. Including when I literally got her ready for a supposed not date with her. To Italian dinner reservations. Or the time they jumped into the pool half naked together goody times or the countless parties they've been to without me or the sleepover she literally fucking had at Riley's I've asked her so many times if she just wanted Riley I've even told her it's okay if she still wanted Riley and I just wanted her to be happy I told her if she needed to be alone it was okay highlight all of this. I've even told her it's okay if she still wanted Riley and that I just wanted her to be happy. I've told her if she needed to be alone, it was okay. I've told her over and over it's okay just to not lie to me and lead me on if I wasn't what she needed in her life right now. Say that again. I've told her over and over it's okay just to not lie to me and lead me on if I wasn't what she needed in her life right now. Do I just walk away and make the choice for her? choose to leave because I love her. And if being alone is what's going to make her better, then that's better than knowing being with me only hurts her. Why doesn't she just ever talk to me? I slam my fist against the coffee table as I sit down, putting my head between my elbows and roughly combing my hands through my hair over and over again, trying to think. This is why I don't go through her phone. This is all exactly fucking why. My phone goes off from the counter where I left it and grab it, taking pictures of the journal. It's almost noon, so Savannah's gonna go be back any minute. I just gotta make it look like nothing happened and go bake her birthday cupcakes and act like everything is normal until I figure out what the fuck to do.
<laughs> Kayla. <laughs> Kayla would have literally just taken that shit and just left it on your kitchen island. Took all of her shit because Kelly's got like all of her face stuff, a little bit of her clothes, whatnot. And just left that on your kitchen counter and then taken all of her shit and just dipped. Never seen you again. Ghost. Bye. Blocked your number. Deleted your number. And it wouldn't have been your guys' stupid games of blocking each other and then still contacting each other. Nah. She would have been like, hasta la vista, bitch. If y'all had seen each other in person, been like, nope, never going to talk to you again. Kelly was too nice. Kelly was too nice because... No, 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 no. It's not even the fact of what you wrote. It's also just the fact of the fact that you constantly just lie to Kelly. Like Kelly has asked you so many times. This is how Kelly has felt. This is what is the reason behind Kelly's anxiety 24 seven. You have this 19 year old so anxiety ridden that she's literally vomiting and crying herself to sleep most nights over Riley mainly. Like literally we saw the other day, she's envisioning Riley. She's seeing Riley in your bed. She's seeing her in the shower. She's feeling her. She's hearing her just everywhere she goes. And it's because you're a lying fucking bitch saying you want her and miss her nine days after you tell your girlfriend you love her. Well, your girlfriend is saying, hey, if you want her, that's okay. Like, just tell me, just don't lie to me. Don't lead me on when that's exactly what you're doing. I throw the journal back in the drawer, burying it under the blankets gently, exactly how it was. I stick the tickets back in the drawer where I found them and look around, but see nothing else. I lay down in bed with Taylor, turning on the first country song that pops up on the TV. Just keep acting like the perfect girlfriend and like nothing is wrong. Savannah comes in and she doesn't even acknowledge me. She says hi to Taylor and rubs behind her ears before going to the bathroom. Now I'm even more irritated. I feel like there's steam coming off my skin. I go to walk into the bathroom and it's locked. What the fuck? It's never locked. She always pees literally in front of me and I hear her moving around in there. What's up, Shields? Um, you locked me out, bro. I responded. She unlocked and opens the door to me. I was taking a shit, she says back, and I don't believe her. Just like recently, she's gone from taking less than two minutes to take Taylor out to taking five minutes plus every single time. Highlight. Just like recently, she's gone from taking Taylor out in less than two minutes to taking five plus minutes every single time. She's sus. Her shit is sus. It's all sus. And now I have real concrete evidence that is all not right. This is what I've accused her of for months now. She always tells me I'm crazy and think too much about Riley. I like that. She always tells me I'm crazy and think too much about Riley. But this is why I always see Riley in my dreams. Why I see her in the kitchen. Why I see her in Savannah's bed. Why I see her in the shower. Why she fucking shows up everywhere. Because I've been right and I've known it all along. Highlight because I've been right and I've known it all along. You okay? She asked me concerned as she walks past me out of the bathroom. I grab her spinning on her heels and pressing her against the wall with my body aggressively making out with her because that seems to be the only way we ever fix any problems. Whoa, she says, pushing me back. It's literally like noon and I have so much to do. You never want to make out with me anymore, I say shaking my head, eyes wide and mouth open to her. Highlight, you never want to make out with me anymore. I already have you, so I don't have to impress you anymore. I already have you, so I don't have to impress you anymore. Said no one ever. Said Savannah so much. I hear bitches bitching about men and I'm like, bitches, you don't even know. You don't even know. Women are so much worse because they're just like, you're so much more connected to them and they just know just how to be so much more evil. Like a man doesn't really know how to fully like get into a woman's head like that. And they can be a jerk and they can be an asshole. But women just are just a different type of manipulative and evil. Just their chef's kiss. They're just so perfectly conniving and evil and just awful. I already have you. So I don't have to impress you anymore. And later, Savannah's going to be like, obviously, that was like a joke. Who's laughing, Savannah? Because when Kelly talks about this on the internet, Sab's going to be like, obviously, I was joking. Like, she's so over-exaggerating everything. Who's laughing? Who's laughing? Is Kelly laughing about the letters and the notes and the journal entries she just fucking found about how you want your fucking ex? Or is she laughing about the part where you said, I already have you, so I don't have to impress you anymore? Highlight, I already have you, so I don't have to impress you anymore. Well, you don't have her anymore. Unfortunate for you. She responds and laughs, but I don't find it funny. It's not funny. 
I look back at her in shock. I don't want to just be a prize one and then discarded, which is the quote for this week. Hi, I don't want to be a prize, just one and then discarded. I respond back. That's not what I meant. And you know it. Then what the fuck did you mean? What the fuck did you mean? Explain, explain. What, what else the fuck did you mean? You just don't say that to someone. There's nothing, there's nothing, nothing sarcastic or funny about that. Like that was just fucking rude and hurtful. I already have you. So I don't have to impress you anymore. You don't even hold my hand anymore either. I say defeated. You know, I hate holding hands. Highly, you know, I hate holding hands because that's not what your Bumble profile says to Caitlin. And that's not what you said to Riley. And that's not what you said at the beginning of you and Kelly's relationship. Mm. Mm. So I'm just, I'm just missing it. I'm just missing it, right? Is anyone else just lost? Is anyone else just lost? Because I'm lost. I'm lost here. She says walking out to the living room. I just stand where she left me though. That's not true. She literally wrote to Riley that she loved holding her hand. So it's not that she doesn't like holding hands. It that, it's that she doesn't like holding my hand. Highlight. So it's not that she doesn't like holding hands. It's that she doesn't like holding my hand. I get up abruptly and grab my stuff. I have to get out of here or I'm going to absolutely explode on her and break up with her or break something or break her. Highlight. I have to get out of here. I'm going to absolutely explode on her and break up with her or break something or break here, her. Are you leaving? She says, as I bend down to put on my Converse. Yeah, I still have stuff to do today before I can come back, but I can stay tonight so I can be here at midnight on your birthday if you still want. I get it if you don't want me to come for your birthday though. I respond, of course you can come. I would just be sitting at home boring by myself anyways. Oh, what, Riley won't be accompanying you? Oh, I'm so sad. I just have to go to soccer and pack tonight. Okay, I say kissing her before I leave. And that's where we're gonna end. Before week 16.1. Who thinks Kelly's about to go mental? Who thinks Kelly's Kelly's is kind of already on off the deep end in this episode. Um, but like for very completely valid reasons. Um, but who thinks Kelly's just to like, who thinks this is just going more downhill? Who thinks Kelly's still just falling down the rabbit hole right now? Like this is, this is going places. This is, this is going places. The tea is going places. The tea is teeing in this episode and Kelly's not crazy. Kelly has been fed by this fucking liar this entire time that she's crazy, that Riley's crazy and that she's crazy and she's just fucking delusional. That's what Savannah said over and over again is that nothing's happening with Riley. Nothing's happening. She doesn't want Riley. She doesn't want Riley. Riley doesn't even really mean that much to her. Riley didn't ever really mean that much to her. And now Kelly has felt like that wasn't true the entire time. Like all of the things like sleeping over at Riley's house, all the parties with Riley, Riley like running her hands up her and being like, she's not me. Like, and then Riley commenting, we have to remember Riley commented on Kelly's TikTok and was like, oh, she was in my bed that night. And all of these things, Kelly was always just like, something's weird. Something's weird. Something's not right. To the point it gave her such severe anxiety 24 seven. And she was like, hey, Savannah, like, if this isn't working, like if you don't want me, if you want her more, or if you just don't want me, like if I'm not making you happy, if I am not, cause Savannah's always like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so depressed, yada, yada, yada. And Kelly is like, if I'm bad for your mental health, like you can walk away. You can walk away from this. If you want her, if I'm not good for you, if I'm not what you want, walk away from me. Just promise me that you will not lie to me and you won't lead me on. And that's all Kelly finds these tickets. Kelly finds this note and Kelly finds these journal entries and she's like, I've been right this entire time. I've been right this entire time. And she's also wired as fuck right now. Like Kelly is not even super saddy in this moment. She's ragey. She is so angry. She's so pissed because she's also wired on Adderall in this moment. Um, so she's, she's pissed. She's pissed and she's fucking wired as all shit. Um, so yeah, we are going to come into the next episode and we're going to see what happens. I'm so excited to be embarking on this new journey with you guys now that we have hit this plot twist in the book. So come back next week and I will see you all then. Bye. Okay, I already changed, but I wanted to add a side point to this as well because we were talking about when she wrote the journal entry, um, she said 
that someone who genuinely cared and she was speaking as though she didn't already have that. And I wanted to show also why this episode and just Kelly in general shows so much how Sav had someone who genuinely cared about her because Kelly has said to Savannah so many times, I don't care if you don't want me. If you, if it's as simple as you just don't want me, like if I'm just not the person for you, or if you want Riley, or if you want someone else, or if I'm just not good for you mentally, if I am not bettering your mental health, if I'm not adding to your life in that way, and you need to walk away from me, from, from me for your mental health, then do that. Just don't lie to me. Just don't leave me on. And to have someone who is so selfless about themselves, like we are all selfish and we're all greedy. And when it comes to Savannah, Kelly is none of those things. Kelly is like, I just want you to be happy. Like, fuck me, fuck my feelings. At the end of the day, if you need to walk away for you, for your mental health, for you to figure yourself out, if you need to walk away because you want Riley or you can want someone else, or if you need to walk away because I'm just not what you want, you can do that. And at the end of the day, well, this is her first love. This will go down in history as Kelly's first love. She is head of her heels in love with this girl. And she's willing to be like, if you need to walk away from me, you can do that. And Sav refuses to do that. So it just goes to show that Kelly loves her in the most genuine and selfless way possible. So I just wanted to add that because I think it's so bullshit of Savannah to say in that scene, I want someone who so genuinely cares about me because there's no one that loves you the way Kelly loved you to literally be like, you're my first love. You're everything. I'm going to write a book and podcast series about you because I loved you so much. And you absolutely destroyed me because I loved you that much. And I care so much about you and what we had and what happened between us. But if you need to walk away from me, I will be okay. I will make myself be okay if that's what you need. And most people don't love people like that. Most people are selfish. Like, this is what I want. Like, please don't walk away from me, yada, 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 because that's how Sav is with Kelly. Like it's all Sav's world. It's don't walk away from me. Like I do really want you like yada, yada, yada. But Kelly is so selfless and so genuinely loves Savannah in the fact, and you know that she so genuinely loves Savannah. And it's like how Sav was like in the scene, she was like, oh, I love Riley because how she loves me. Kelly doesn't love Savannah because how Savannah loves her because Savannah's kind of actually shit, obviously, from this scene at loving Kelly. Kelly loves Savannah. And that's so obviously shown by the fact that Kelly is like, if I'm not what you want, if I am not what you need, if you want someone else, if you need someone else, if you need to walk away for your mental health, do what you need to do. And so it's just really fucked of Savannah to, in this scene, be like, I want someone who genuinely cares about me because you had that. You had that. And you lost that and no one will ever genuinely love you the way Kelly did. And no one will ever genuinely care about you the way that Kelly did. Because there's not many people in history who can say that they've had a book and podcast series written about them because a 19 year old loved them that much and they absolutely destroyed a 19 year old that much. So fuck you and saying, oh my God, I wish I had someone who genuinely cared about me because you had that and you lost that. Um, so that is the end of this week and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.